Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and continuing from our last video where I showed you how you can partition this, create file system on top of it and mount it in order to use it, right? Uh, in this uh, video, I'm going to show you how you can permanently mount your uh, file system because the mount which we did in our last video uh, is basically temporary because we did it using mount command if you remember, right? And if I do a df h right now you can see that our sdb1 partition is now a uh, file system is now gone so i have rebooted this virtual machine and this partition is no more over there right so in this video we are going to take a look how we can mount a file system so that it remains persistent over reboots so basically you can mount a file system using uh, uh, either its name which is like dev sd a, B, a dev sda1 or dev sdb1 or you can use uh, uuids so the latest convention in i mean in today's time is uuids because the device name can tend to change when kernel boots because it depends how your device is being uh, uh, fetched by the kernel in what order so the order can change so the device name can change uh, very unlikely though but it can change that is why uh, today in these times we prefer uuid so if you want to view the UUID of your device, let me clear my screen. There's a command called BLK ID. So if you do BLK ID, you can see that my SDA1 has a UUID of this and my SDB1 has UUID of this and the type of file system. So SDA1 is XFS and SDB1 which we created in our last video is ext4 all right so the file which we use to permanently mount uh, our file system is called fstab and it's basically located in let's just cat it out etc fstab so if i cat it out you can see there's just one entry which is my sda1 file system and we'll go over these entries what are these uh, to go over those what i'm going to do is first we'll look at the man page for fstab so this page actually has all the information you would require so first basically defines the name static information about your file system uh, so you can read this the things which we want to go through is this fields the first field the second field so this file actually has six fields so let's just go over them each one by one so the first field describes a block special device so this is basically the name of the device or the uuid of the device right the second field is the file system basically describes the mount point so okay so this describes where the where you want to mount your or where your file yeah, where you want to mount your file system this is basically that the third field describes the type of file system so like F xfs or uh, ext4 or ext3 any kind of that file system the fourth field describes the mount option so you would generally see that mount option is set to default which basically ends up like read write so the, your file system would be read write suid would be enable auto so that it can be mounted using mount hyphen a no user and async i mean we'll go over these right so you can see it's all these description are given over here so when you do no auto you do not mount via mount hyphen a but when it's auto you can do that users allow user to mount so any user can mount file system right the fifth field is used by the dump so i'll talk about this later and the sixth field is basically the file system integrity check so whether you want to have integrity check or not every time so the sixth field defined that and normally you would see that the fifth and the sixth field are zero so you would avoid taking the backup or the dump and you would avoid uh, the file system check as well all right so let's just exit out of this So now what we are going to do is basically mount our file system dev sdb1 which we created in our last video and we'll put those entries in our 
etc fs tab file and then we'll do a reboot of this machine and we'll see that if our mount basically persist over that reboot all right so let me just clear my screen let me just cat out etc fs tab so if you remember we created a directory in the root which was i think my file system so this is this will be our mount point so this is where we are going to mount it okay so um, one more thing we would need is we would need the block device uuid so blk id so i'm going to copy this this is our block device id or universally unique id now we are going to go inside vim uh, sorry etc fs tab tab and go to the end of the file and you see all these entries are already here you just need to copy it so uuid equals to the uuid which we have the mount point will be my file system type of file system was ext4 We'll set defaults and for dump we'll say zero and for file system check we'll say zero. So this looks good. Let's just save our file. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reboot this machine. So I'll pause the video over here, reboot the machine and come back to show that if our file system got mounted or not. Right, welcome back. So our machine has rebooted and it did in almost like two minutes, three minutes max. Now let's just, just do a df h and see if our okay. So you can see that dev sdb one has been mounted and it has been mounted on the location which we gave in our etc fs tab file. So there's an another uh, very interesting file which you should know about is there in etc itself it is called mtab so this file basically has information about uh, all the current mounts on your system right so let's just go through so you can see we have dev sda1 and sdb1 which are basically our disk right apart from that there are a lot of uh, other mounts so you must be wondering what is this prog, what is this sysfs. So these are basically special mounts, uh, in-memory file system you can call them. So we'll talk about uh, in-memory file system in the later videos. But for now, and this file basically is presenting the output of the command which we ran in our last video was mount. So if you compare the output, it's almost the same. What you get over here and what is there in that file. Okay, so just wanted to tell you that this there is this file which is present which has in the information about all your current mounts. Now let's talk about checking and repairing file systems. So many a times users shut down the system rudely or in case there's a power cut uh, when system just goes down abruptly, right? Or it can be like you are modifying your file system and something happens and your system just just shut down so in this case you can i mean have a corrupted file system because uh, kernel actually caches the data in memory before writing it to file system and when system shuts down like this abruptly they can there can be a mismatch between the data on the disk right to do disk integrity check uh, uh, fsck is basically a tool which we use right and for different system, a uh, different file system, uh, FSCK can be different. Like for EXT type file system, FSCK basically points to E2 FSCK. Okay. So to do uh, an FSCK check or an E2 FSCK check, uh, it's very simple basically. So you just do E2, or you can just call FSCK and the file system. So dev suppose you want to do it on sdb1 and you give it right and what will happen is that fsck if it finds there are corrupted uh, files or corrupted file system the file system is uh, corrupted 
it will ask you questions and and if it and if it's asking a lot of questions then you would know that uh, there is something wrong with your file system because fsck won't ask a lot of questions uh, but when it starts asking plenty questions and it's just not ending then you would know that there is something wrong with your uh, file system and while going through your file system when fsck basically finds a file which has no name but the inode is present it puts that file in the loss and found directory so you must have seen there's a loss plus found directory sometimes in your directories right so basically that is what uh, uh, fsck does so if it finds a file which has an inode but doesn't have a nine and name it puts that file in the lost and found directory and give it the name uh, same as the inode number all right you would normally actually not run fsck on your uh, file system on day to day basis because linux does the linux kernel does that for you at the boot time so at the boot time the file system integrity is checked by fsck if you want more information about fsck you can just simply do man fsck and there will be a bunch of information which is available to you uh, in the man page itself so fsck is used to check and optionally repair one or more linux file system and there there are basically options to just run fsck to see if there's any problem and not repair it uh, yeah so you can just go through the options and see what all options are available I will not be going because if we go over FSCK options, probably it will take an hour or so to just talk about FSCK. All right, I think this is it for this video, guys. Uh, in the next video, we are going to talk about, like I said, the special type of file system, the in-memory file system, and the swap memory, right? So yeah, please do subscribe to the channel before leaving, and thank you for watching. Keep rocking.